I am Marcus Blake with That Nerd Show here at the 2018 Dallas International Film Festival. We're speaking with director Ty Roberts about the Iron Orchard. Sure. And while we were at the round table, a few more things that I'm curious about with this film. Before you read the book by Tom Pendleton, did you know much about the oil industry here in Texas? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. My father, grandfather, and supposedly great-grandfather had all uh, been involved in the oil industry. Unfortunately, not at the level of our main character in the film, Jim McNeely, who becomes this very formidable, successful wildcatter. Right. Um, but they don't, my dad was an independent uh, landman. Grandfather had a uh, pipe and supply company and also dabbled in drilling and whatnot. And I guess my great-grandfather, I think he was either up in Ohio or Oklahoma or both and was like a roughneck. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But I mean, after reading the book, I mean, you there was a lot more you learned and your, your eyes kind of became more wide open to everything about the history. It, it's really fascinating uh, in in regards to what it actually takes to drill a well. Right. And I think the the most interesting thing is that it's it's four or five or even less sometimes. Back in the olden times, it was a couple of three guys for a year or two on a rig, just hammering away at the earth. Right. And that's it. I mean, there's there's nothing more to it. All you're doing is is drilling and i thought that was pretty fascinating and you know it's nothing short of of you know panning for gold or anything else you know your your luck plays a major part to it and uh there's a great line in the book and it says they're dog lucky guys who aren't worth a damn who strike it rich and they're the greatest guys in the world who never make a dime right and it just all depends on luck and it's it's funny when you think about luck in life you know how do you create luck how do you you know avoid uh bad luck you know things like that so it, it has a lot to do with that but it also just has a lot to do with what's important in, in a man's house. Now you talk about this movie being a love story, yeah. you know, between uh, between a man and a woman and stuff, but I mean also a love story with, you know, Texas itself or what you love doing, your passion. Does some of that go into it as well? Because that's kind of what I also got when I watched the film. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, to me, it, it was really important to me to be able to tell a story specifically about the Texas Wildcatter and, and what it took, you know, to go out there and actually make this happen and, and to be successful at it. And the cool thing about Jim McNeely's story is, is that he comes to a point where he sort of has to make a decision between success and happiness and that happiness being the love of a really wonderful woman versus his ambition and it's just a it's a it's a worldly story a timeless story and it's important now as it was you know 50 or 80 years ago absolutely now at that nerd show we always have a very nerdy question we ask at the end of every interview so you get to this is the first time you've ever interviewed with us so the yeah. first time you get to answer it okay if you could have a superpower or even a weapon of choice within the nerd universe to fight the forces of evil, what would that be? Man, I've always had dreams of flying six feet above the earth. And so, whether that helps me if evil comes, I don't know. But I, I'd love to be able to cruise around just in this flying mode of... of well, as one cinematographer put it, you're your own drone shot, so it will definitely work in the film industry. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. Dude, can you imagine holding a camera in I my know. hand? Like, right. <laughs> yeah. That's a great answer. Okay. Well, thanks, Ty. Yeah, we man. did love the film, yeah. and good luck with it.